This video shows you some of the reports available in the print preview window of CHVAC. After selecting the reports we want on the Properties of Print Preview 1 window, we are now ready to look at the reports in the Print Preview window. Click the Preview button. The Title Page report provides an optional page with information about your company and your client. You can replace the image with your own logo. The building envelope report shows the average U-factor for the roof, walls, and glass, as well as a composite U-factor for the building. It also shows the wall and glass U-factors broken out by direction. Some government agencies require you to show what the average U-factors are for a building as an indication of its energy efficiency, and this report may help you with that. The Building Summary Loads report is one of the most useful reports since it shows the total load of everything that can be entered in the project. The Building Summary section shows the same loads as the first section, but broken down into only six major categories. The Check Figures section shows various quantities that help you make sure that the load and air quantities are about what you think they should be. For example, square feet per ton is included, since that is a commonly known kind of value and can be used for comparison against rules of thumb. The Air Handler Summary Loads Report lists each room in the air handler along with each room's peak time, load, supply CFM, and outside air CFM. This is the first of two reports you get when you check the Air Handler R checkbox under Load Summaries on the Properties of Print Preview window. Notice that since our two rooms are slightly different from each other, they peak at different times in the day. It's not unusual for rooms to even peak in different months. The last two columns deal with outside air quantities. They show the ventilation method, the required ventilation air, and the actual ventilation air. Notice that the actual CFM value of outside air does not match the required CFM value in these rooms, and that is usually the case. If rooms in a system have different requirements for outside air, like our test project, then some rooms usually get less outside air than you requested, while others get more. But the air handler as a whole gets the total amount of outside air that you requested. The Air Handler Total Load Summary Report shows the loads in various quantities at the Air Handler level. This report is the second one you get when you check the Air Handler R checkbox under Load Summaries on the Properties of Print Preview window. The sensible heat ratio shown here is that of the loads, not the air handling equipment that you may have selected. It is equal to the sensible load of the air handler divided by the sensible plus latent load. The design conditions shown here are for the air system peak time. For times of day other than 3 p.m., the assumed time of your entered design conditions, the cooling outdoor temperature will be lower than the value you entered. See the outside dry bulb air temperature at any given time topic in the help file to see how the temperature at other times of day is calculated. If we had entered more exhaust than ventilation, this line saying that ventilation controls outside air would instead say exhaust controls outside air. Since we only have rooms in one air handler in this project, the check figures section here has the same values as the check figures section shown on the building summary report. Notice that the Room Detailed Loads report says at room peak times since we selected the Room Details report. If we had instead selected the Zone Details report, it would say at zone peak times. There are at least two lines of cooling load results for each window you've entered. The first line shows the gain from transmission simply due to the temperature difference, while the second line shows the load due to the radiant gain from sunlight. If you have a shading device that partially blocks the sun, there will be four lines per window. Two for the unshaded portion of the window and two for the shaded portion. This is one place in which the program applies safety factors. 
on the supply side loads at the room level. Here's the note that we originally entered for room one. It is shown because we checked the Include Room Notes on Room Detailed Loads Report checkbox on the Properties of Print Preview window. Since we entered items in the pop-up windows for both equipment and lighting loads, the items we entered are listed here. Room 2 has both lighting and equipment loads, but we didn't enter any individual items of equipment or lighting in the lighting loads and equipment cooling loads windows. So unlike Room 1, there's no detailed listing of lighting and equipment loads items. The Building Profile Graphs report can be useful to help us see what is happening with the cooling loads throughout the day, as well as during each of our cooling months. Notice that the loads during the months of August, June, July, and September are all pretty close to each other during each hour, while the January and December loads are significantly lower, as expected. The psychrometric analysis report shows various air temperature and moisture values for the air system. The system load analysis section starts with the beginning of the supply side of the coil, then shows the temperature increases leading up to the room condition of 75 degrees that we entered. Then the temperature increases due to the return side loads are accounted for, leading up to the temperature of the air as it enters the cooling coil. The air side check figure psychrometric equations section shows some check figures that can be helpful. These alternative equations confirm that the results shown elsewhere in the reports are correct. The chilled and hot water flow rates and steam requirements section shows the GPM of chilled and hot water required to meet the loads, as well as the pounds of steam required to meet the heating load. The Entering Cooling Coil and Entering Heating Coil Conditions section shows the condition of the air right before it enters the coil. These entering coil points are typically the result of mixing some of the return air with some outside air. The Leaving Coil Conditions section shows the condition of the air as it leaves the cooling and heating coils. Note that for the cooling side, the leaving dry bulb temperature may be a little higher than the temperature you specified on the air handler data window. That's because sometimes the temperature you ask for is impossible, since it would make the humidity higher than 100%, putting the point to the left of the saturation curve on a psychrometric chart. The psychrometric chart report shows all the points and processes involved in cooling the space to the desired temperature. The legend shown just above the chart lets you know what each point on the chart stands for. All the types of supply and return side loads are included as needed. If the program does raise the leaving cooling coil condition to a temperature higher than what you asked for, this graph can show you why. Notice that the leaving coil condition LC is at 55 degrees dry bulb temperature, the same temperature that we asked for on the air handler data window. If we had asked for 54 or 53 degrees, that would have been fine too. But if we had asked for 52 degrees, it would have been to the left of the saturation curve, so the program would have raised it to 53. The load preview report can typically show only about 12 columns of data as shown here. There are over 90 columns of data available to be shown on this report. To show different columns than these, click the Layout button on the Load Preview Windows toolbar, and specify the columns you want to see on the Load Preview Printed Report Layout tab. The pie chart reports help you see at a glance which parts of the project are causing the highest loads. You can see here that the people load is the highest cooling load. Thanks for watching.